Hey everyone and welcome to Felix's Space Time. In today's video we have an interview with Ryan Hanson Space who creates realistic renders of Starship and Super Heavy. I'll, I'll overlay some of his work throughout the interview. A big thank you to Jonas who created my wonderful new YouTube intro and also a big thank you to Rocket Art on Twitter who created my wonderful new intro interview background. If you enjoyed today's video don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. We're go, flight. Okay, we're go. We're go. Same time. We're go. Thank you so, so much um, for coming on here for an interview. For those who do not know you, can you tell everyone a bit about yourself? Yes. So uh, my name is Ryan Hansen. I go by Ryan Hansen Space on Twitter and uh, YouTube for where I upload some animations. Um, I am a computer hardware uh, design engineer located in uh, the United States. And I kind of uh, kind of fell in love with uh, space stuff. Um, kind of always have been into space stuff, and so um, I now make some animations, um, kind of as a as a part time thing. I do a lot of renders. I um, post stuff on on uh, Twitter and YouTube, um, particularly surrounded around uh, the the Starship program. Um, it's kind of the uh, the big thing that I that I follow closely and uh, create renders for and. Um, that's pretty much uh, kind of the summary about me. Um, I, I do it kind of as a part-time fun thing and uh, just really like the uh, Starship program. So that's primarily what I, uh, I focus on. Awesome. It's great to, um, to meet you and talk to you. Um, can you walk me through the whole process of creating a render from the idea all the way to the finished product? Yeah, so a lot of my renders revolve around um, kind of angles and views that you typically aren't able to get. Um, a lot of times, you know, particularly with Starship down in Texas, um, a lot of people take photos from the road. So we have a lot of angles that are of a kind of a particular um, format, a lot of you know, the angle. Um, and what I like to focus on doing is creating something that's um, not something that people might see. So maybe some more aerial type shots or shots from maybe uh, the sides of the launch site that you normally um, can't see. So really it comes down to, okay, what have people not seen? What do people, you know, maybe want to see um, as well as, you know, are there any events that I can um, create a render surrounding? Like for instance, um, you know, over the past couple of months, I've done some static fire um, renderings of Starship on the pad. And so uh, that's something that not a lot of people do, or at least I haven't seen a lot of, um, a lot of renders of that. So that's something that I, I like to take an event um, of Starship, um, twist it with an angle that, you know, might not be possible to get, um, you know, really close to the pad during a static fire. Um, so it starts kind of with that as an idea. And then from there, I look at, you know, what kind of assets am I going to need to create uh, for this scene? So if it's, for instance, a static fire, um, there's a piece of software called Embergen that I use. It's um, it's actually in beta not too long ago, but it's becoming a lot more uh, featureful. Um, but I use that program to create a lot of smoke simulations, fire simulations, um, and some other things for, um, for that, maybe the condensation coming off the vehicle. Um, but then I bring all these assets into um, my program called Blender, which is um, also used by a lot of others out there. I know Seabass 3D um, also uses it among a bunch of others uh, of us in the space community. Um, and so I bring a lot of those assets in, um, you know, even down to creating um, vehicles themselves, uh, the environment that the vehicles are in, all of that's pretty much done within Blender. Um, you kind of combine all of these um, assets together, kind of position them where you want, and then you're down to kind of, you know, playing with your lighting to try and mimic, um, you know, what you would see in, in real life. Um, and that's actually quite a difficult task sometimes, kind of depending on uh, what you're trying to frame. Um, and how you're trying to frame it. Um, but yeah, once you get your lighting done, you're able to go through, um, kind of do some preliminary renders. Um, there's always gonna be settings that you're gonna have to play with. Um, so being able to uh, render something and, and check it out and you know re-render and um, kind of go from start to finish to, to kind of get that idea is, um, it can be quite, quite time consuming depending on uh, what's in your scene, uh, especially if there's a lot of smoke um, volumetrics are really hard on a graphics card, so you really have to have, um, you know, fast hardware if, if you're doing that quite frequently. So, um, 
that's pretty much start to finish um, how I, my process works. Um, I guess a lot of times I'll use uh, you know Adobe After Effects or Premiere for uh, final rendering of the the animation. Um, I actually use After Effects for even my still frame images. I'm a lot more familiar with it uh, versus Photoshop, um, so I'm very quickly able to pull stuff in, you know, adjust my different filters and uh, and then render out an image in After Effects. And uh, that's primarily what uh, what I use for uh, for software would be um, After Effects, Blender, and Embergen. Oh, wow, okay. A lot of work to create a render then. Um, I've seen um, some of your work and it's really, really good. Um, how can people, where can people find your work and how can they support it? Yeah, so my, uh, a lot of my work is on my Twitter account, which is uh, Ryan Hansen Space. Um, post a lot of uh, still renders there. Uh, Twitter's not so great for animations. So I do a lot of, um, I put a lot of my animations up on my YouTube account, which is also uh, Ryan Hansen space um there's maybe a couple short animations there and a couple longer ones as well okay brilliant um when did you start um first creating renders and were they space related at first actually let's see here so my first renders um were actually made quite a while ago <laughs> i'm trying to remember the exact year i want to say around um 2008 2009 somewhere in there um, I actually had seen, um, it was the Michael Bay Transformers movie, the, the first one that came out. Um, and I was just blown away by how photo real um, they were able to, to create the, the Transformer characters um, in, the, uh, in the actual you know, movie footage. Um, and so from kind of there on, I kind of started learning 3D because I really, I wanted to create that. Um, so actually one of my first models, um, was actually a model of Optimus Prime that, that I made myself, um, didn't really go, you know, too far with that. Um, I, I got the model done. I didn't really get it animated or anything. Um, a lot of challenges back then with software and getting things to work the way that you, you wanted it to work. It's way easier now. Um, but that's kind of where I, um, started it. It wasn't really space related. Um, I suppose you could maybe argue the Transformers, maybe, <laughs> but um, but from then I, I kind of um, I made a couple of games with like the Blender game engine. Um, it really, I never published them. It was mainly just for for fun on my end. Um, but I've done quite a bit of stuff in 3D. I know um, really the the first space thing that I did in 3D was actually for um, while I was in college. I was working. Um, on a project for my senior design team that revolved around a cube satellite that was going to go um, on a SpaceX rocket actually to the ISS and be deployed. And so we were making a um, kind of a teaser video for the, the administration. And so I created a, a video for that, um, rendered that out with, uh, with Blender um, and we used that in, in our project. And um, it wasn't, it was about probably about 2019 is when I started with uh, with Starship and creating, um, you know, 3D animations and 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 renders um, revolving around uh, Starship. Where did you first hear about Starship, and where did your um, interest in space come from? Yeah, so interest in space. Um, I've kind of always been interested in space. Um, I was pretty young when the space shuttle program. Uh, was um, was really going on, um, and then when it retired in, in 2011, I was I was aware of it. I definitely didn't know a whole lot about it, um, but from then, um, there really wasn't a whole lot of stuff in space that that really interested me, just because um, it wasn't as accessible as it, it used to be. Um, so it really wasn't until um, SpaceX started landing the uh, Falcon 9 that's when my interest started to pick back up. Um, because that kind of opened up a whole new um, door for everything related to space. And so, um, you know, back in around 2015-ish is when I started following the Falcon 9 program. And inevitably that led to the, um, the ITS system that, uh, that Elon and SpaceX had teased. Um, so I followed that pretty, pretty closely for a while. And um, of course, it became you know quite real when um, Starhopper was was built um, and tested down in Texas. And so, I remember exactly where I was when 
uh, when Starhopper did that 150 meter hop. Um, and pretty much from then on, it was just, you know, Starship, you know, it was kind of the, the biggest focus that I had, um, you know, following that, that program, because it was so exciting seeing, you know, something like that, that happened. Uh, that's really where, you know, everything started. All right, okay. Um, do you think you'll ever visit Starbase um, and maybe get more of an interest of what's down there to improve your renders? Yeah, I, I think um, I think that there is a plan to visit Starship real or Starbase real soon. Um, I'm sure there's going to be some more information coming about that uh, here soon. But um, I would imagine uh, within not too long, there is going to be myself and maybe a couple of others um, down at Starbase, and uh, we'll be getting you know up close and personal with. Uh, some of the rockets uh, as close as we can get uh, as the general public. And um, I think, you know, being there will be quite exciting. Um, uh, basically being able to stand right next to a lot of these rockets that we built in 3D, you know, for, you know, a year, two years now. Um, and to stand right next to them, that, that really um, puts it into perspective, you know, how big these things are. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Goodbye.